and welcome to BCC Kids Church Season 3! Wow! It's been a while since we've had our first season! Yes, indeed! Time flies so fast and for sure, a lot of kids out there learn a lot from all our lessons! Did you miss all our praises and worship for the Lord? How about making creative crafts and listening, listening to amazing stories? Well, we are all back to talk about famous people in the Bible this season. And they are all from the Old Testament. Are, are you ready, kids? Great! So before we begin, let us pray first. Please follow after us. I fold my hands. I fold my hands. Bow down my head. Bow down my head. And close my eyes. And close my eyes. And pray. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for this wonderful day. May you give us listening ears. May you give us listening ears. Attentive eyes, attentive eyes, and teachable hearts as we learn another lesson for today. And teachable hearts as we learn another lesson for today. In, In Jesus' name, name we pray. pray. Amen. One, two, three, four rules of life. One, two, three, four rules of life. One, two, three, four rules of life. Four rules of life. Kids, are you ready? One, God loves me. Two, I have sinned. Three, Jesus died for me. Four, I must decide to live for Jesus. One, God loves me. Two, I have sinned. Three, Jesus died for me. Four, I must decide to live for Jesus. One, two, three, four rules of life. One, two, three, four rules of life. One, two, three, four rules of life. Four rules of life. Yeah! Story time! In today's story, we will learn about a young boy who was used by God to save his people from their enemies. Are you ready? Great! Let's go back to a time when Saul was the king of Israel. Saul kept disobeying God, so God asked Samuel to find a new king. Go to Bethlehem, and there is a man named Jesse with eight sons. One of them will be the next king. When Samuel first met the sons, he immediately thought that the first son named Eliab would be the king that God had chosen. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at the way he looks or how big he is. Eliab is not the one I have chosen. I do not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. Jesse brought more of his sons to meet Samuel, but none of them God had chosen either. How have I met all your sons? I have one son left named David. He's the youngest, and he's out looking after the sheep. I will bring him here to meet you. As soon as Samuel saw him, the Lord spoke to him and said, He is the one. So Samuel anointed him with oil, which was a special way of promising him that he would be the next king. And from that day on, the power of the Lord was with David. David continued to take care of his father's ship in the fields. When he didn't have much to do in the field, he played instruments and wrote songs and poems.
songs that we can find in the book of Psalms in the Bible. Several years had passed since David was anointed by Samuel. King Saul and his army were once again fighting the Philistines. For a very long time, the Philistines wanted to conquer Israel and take away all the possessions. They were constantly waging wars and were seeking an opportunity to defeat the Israelites. The Philistines appeared to have an advantage over Israel. They had a giant. His name was Goliath. Goliath was over nine feet tall. Not only was he huge, but the armor Goliath wore protected him from most harm. Every morning and every evening for 40 days, Goliath shouted to the Israelites in his big, deep voice. Hey, you guys, I dare you to find one man to fight me. If he can beat me, we will all become your servants. But if I win, you will all become our servants. When Saul and all his men saw this, they were very afraid. David's three oldest brothers were among the soldiers of Israel. They were the only ones in David's family that could go fight because they were old enough. Now David's father, Jesse, heard about the giant and was worried for his sons. He called David out of the fields and asked him to take some food to his brothers and report back how they are doing. So David set off to visit his brothers. As he approached them, he heard Goliath shouting his challenge like he did every morning. Isn't someone going to stand up to this man? <laughs> <laughs> David asked the man in the army, What will be done for the man who kills that Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. Then I will fight this giant Philistine! One of the men overheard this and ran to Saul and told him what David said. Saul approached David and said, You can't fight Goliath. You're only a boy, and he has been fighting for many years. I have had to fight lions and bears to protect my father's ship. God help me keep me safe then, and he will keep me safe now. It was too bad that Saul the king wasn't trusting God to help him. He didn't know what to do to beat Goliath. Then this young boy named David came, and he knew exactly what to do and trusted that God would help him. That's why God loved David's heart and wanted him to be king. So Saul dressed David in heavy armor to protect him from Goliath, but David took it off. It was so heavy, he could hardly walk, and he knew that God would keep him from harm. Instead, David went to a stream nearby and found five smooth stones, put them in a pouch around his waist, and with his sling, he went to Goliath. As David approached Goliath, he looked at David and thought it was a joke. Goliath thought that he could easily beat David, and it was funny that Saul would send him a small boy to fight him. But David said to him without fear, You fight with a sword, and I come with God on my side. And today, everyone will know that there is one true God in this land. 
Goliath didn't care what David said, and he moved closer to attack him. David ran quickly to meet him. Reaching into his pouch, he pulled out a stone, put it into his slingshot, and shot it to Goliath. The stone had hit him right between his eyes, and suddenly, Goliath started to lose his balance. He fell with a loud thud right on his face. David had done it! He beat the giant Philistine. When the rest of the Philistines saw this, they ran away and the Israelite army chased after them and killed them. And so, David became a hero to all the people in Israel. Wow! What a courageous and brave young man David was! Although he was small, but his faith was big and believed that God would help him fight his enemy. Kids, as we admire David's heroic courage, we need to remember that it was the God of Israel who enabled him overcome Goliath. This is the same God who is with us today. When we trust in Him, God will enable us to overcome our giants too. Goliath was a man who stood very tall. David was a boy who was but small. Goliath wore armor and fought with a sword. David's armor was his faith in the Lord. One stone slung just by David's faith, knocked the giant down, put him in his place. When the army saw what David had done, they turned on their heels and began to run. Swing, 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 you don't have to be afraid. With God on your side to open up your eyes, you can be brave, brave, brave. Swing, 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 you don't have to be afraid. With God on His side to open up your eyes, you can be brave, brave, brave. Goliath was a man who was very strong. David was a boy who knew right from wrong. Goliath bullied people using his size. David chose faith and that choice was wise. Swing, 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 you don't have to be afraid. With God on your side to open up your eyes, you can be brave, brave, brave. Swing, 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 you don't have to be afraid. With God on your side to open up your eyes, you can be brave, brave, brave. One stone slung just by David's faith, knocked the giant down, put him in his place. When the army saw what David had done, they turned on their heels and began to run Swing, swing, swing You don't have to be afraid With God on your side to open up your eyes You can be brave, brave, brave Swing, swing, swing You don't have to be afraid With God on your side to open up your eyes You can be brave, brave, brave With God on your side to open up your eyes you can be brave, brave, brave. Memory verse five. Hey kids, I'm Teacher Patrick, and it's memory verse time. Our memory verse for today is First Samuel sixteen seven. But as you can see. There are words missing. Can you help me fix the verse? Awesome! And all you have to do is select the gift with the corresponding words, okay? First, the Lord does not blank at the things people look at. Is it this one with the ribbon or the plain one? Well, I think you are picking the one with the ribbon. Hmm, well, let's check what's inside. Uh-oh, that's not the right word. So now we know that the plain one has the right answer, which is look. 
Sometimes we can easily be fooled by what we see. And when we see something good, it does not automatically mean that it is right. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. Next, people look at the blank appearance. Is it this one or the other one? Hmm. That's right! Outward. People look at the outward appearance. It is expected that everyone must look representable. However, it is best that we make ourselves better. Lastly, but the Lord looks at the blank. Is it the big gift or the small gift? That's right! The big gift has the correct word, which is heart. But the Lord looks at the heart. Above all else, our hearts or our character matters most. So kids, let us all continue to be kind just like David. Now that we have completed our verse, it is now time for us to recite our memory verse. 1 Samuel 16, 7, The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. One more time. 1 Samuel 16, 7, The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That's it, kids! Very, very good! Very, very good! Very good, very good, very, very good! Bye! Have you ever felt so small? Well, always remember the story of David that even if he looks so small standing against the giant, he was able to slay it because God was with him. And so are you. You can be courageous and strong too. So that's it for today kids. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot of things from our story for today. But before we end, let us pray. Please follow after me. I fold my hands, bow down my head, close my eyes, and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for teaching us not to fear because you are always with us. May we become braver every single day and learn to trust you always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye kids! See you next week!